Thank you for joining me on this adventure. Your presence means the world to me. Thank you for joining us today as we dive into Lynn Ashkenazi. Rav Yehuda Leon Ashkenazi, French spelling Lynn Ashkenazi, Arabic, Hebrew, also known as Manitou, June 21, 1922 in Oran, Algiers, October 21, 1996 in Jerusalem, Israel, a Jewish rabbi and educator, was a spiritual leader of 20th century French Jewry. As we enter this new phase, let's uncover the impact of life and endeavors on our broader topic. Rav Ashkenazi's life encompassed two different cultures, which resulted in his ability to bridge Western and Jewish frames of mind. He was born in Algiers to Rav David Ashkenazi, the last chief rabbi of Algiers, and Rachel Tubol, a descendant of a prestigious rabbinical line of Spanish Kabbalic scholars. One of its ancestors was Rav Yosef Ibn Tubol a direct disciple of the Hazri, and another was Rabbi Asher ben Jehiel, the Rosh, a prominent Ashkenazi leader of 13th century Spain. However, her education was Western. Rav Ashkenazi studied simultaneously in Yeshiva and in French secular high school in Oran, and Kabbalah in Marrakesh, Morocco. He studied philosophy and psychology in the University of Algiers, and later, when he moved to France, philosophy, ethnology and anthropology in the Sorbonne in Paris. He was recruited to the French Foreign Legion in 1943, served in the infantry and was wounded in the Battle of Strasbourg. After the Second World War was over, he moved to metropolitan France. There he joined the Jewish Scouts of France, where he was given the nickname Manitou, which in indigenous North American mythology means spirit or the great spirit. In 1946, to the call of Robert Custer Gamson, he joined the School of Young Jewish Leadership in Orsay, near Paris, which aspired to establish a Jewish spiritual leadership instead of the one perished in the Holocaust. He met his wife, Mrs. Esther Bambi, as well as studied from his teacher and mentor in Orsay, Jacob Gordon. After teaching for a few years, Rav Ashkenazi became principal of the Orsay School in 1951 with Professor Andrenea as president. In the following years, his involvement in the Jewish community further grew as he became president of the Jewish Students' Organization UEJF, Jewish Scouts Movement EEIF, and established the Center of Academic Jewish Studies CUEJ. As an intellectual figure, Rav Ashkenazi influenced the French school of Jewish thought of Zécole de Pence Juive de Paris, a spiritual and intellectual movement which developed in Orsay and later around the annual French Jewish Intellectuals Conferences, and aimed at reviving post Holocaust French Jewry from its ashes. Its main goal was to understand and transmit the Jewish thought of the Torah through the use of European, universal, academic, modern thought. Its leading figures were Rab Leon Ashkenazi, Professor Emmanuel Levinas, Professor Andrenea, Professor Elian Omodo Levy Valency, writer Ellie Wiesel, writer Albert Memi, and many others. Meeting Rav Zviyahu Kuk and Rav Baruch Ashlag, who introduced to him the thought of their prestigious fathers, Rav Kuk and Rav Yehu Ashlag, influenced Rav Ashkenazi's thought, and in 1968, following the Six Day War, he made Aliyah, moved to Jerusalem and became a central figure in the Israeli Francophone community. He established Maziomet Institute for Jewish Studies and Yer Center for Young Jewish Leadership after the Manor of Orsay. He emphasized that Am Israel's return to Zion had been prophesied by the great prophets of the Bible, that it constitutes part of the cycle of redemption in the history of the Jewish nation and that the ones who do not participate in this movement miss one of the most significant crossroads in the history of the Jewish people. He contributed to the field of inter-religion discourse, traveling yearly to Cameroon, to the request of Cameroon's president Paul Bayer, who was interested in being acquainted with the Bible and the history of the Jewish people. He met with the Dalai Lama, Tibet's exiled leader, and held close contacts with many Christian priests, among which was Professor Marcel Jacques Dubois. He received many awards, among them the Israeli Neset Award in 1990. In 1996 he died and was eulogized by Rabbi Mordecai Eliyahu, chief rabbi of Israel. Since he taught mainly in French, his thought remained concealed to non-French speakers during his lifetime. 
However, following the translation and publication of his lectures in Hebrew, Rav Ashkenazi's thought continues to gain new audiences to this day. His disciples and colleagues, such as Rav Shumo Ovina, Rav Eli Yehuzini, Rav Yeri Sheki, Rav Yehoshua Tsukaman, Rav Yosef Atown, Professor Benjamin Gross, Professor Moshe Halmish, and many more, continued to spread his teachings to Israeli audiences. As we progress, let's shine a spotlight on Rav Ashkenazi's thought and examine its intricate interplay within our topic. Rav Ashkenazi's thought can be described as historical and existential query into the meaning of the identity of Israel, by extracting the existential meaning of the biblical stories, unifying and clarifying the coherence of Jewish commentary tradition and explaining Hebrew concepts and themes through the use of universal terminology striving to integrate to opposing worlds, traditional orthodox Jewish heritage and modern thought and values, while remaining loyal to both. This achievement was what drew wide and diverse audiences to his lectures. Rav Ashkenazi used traditional methods of drash to introduce new ways of understanding Judaism, while using concepts and ideas taken from Kabbalah, Midrash, Hasidit and Gemara. Theory of Inendament Torah Hatolodot Manitao's main effort was focused on understanding history, in Hebrew Toledot Endament, through the Torah, especially through the book of Genesis, which relates the beginning of human history. The principles of this study were that the Bible is the center and source of the faith, inspiration and power of the people of Israel, and that, since the Bible was transmitted by the Creator in a moment of historical epiphany, it constitutes the only valid overview of history and its purpose. In other words, history can be read and understood retrospectively only when reading the Torah, in the notion of the verse this is the book of the generations of man Genesis. Indeed, the first twenty generations of humanity present human genealogy on to Hebrew genealogy, however, each generation in its turn also symbolizes a unique human identity which has meaning and relevance to modern life. According to this view, biblical figures are the origins of nowadays identities and situations and reappear throughout history on an individual, social and national basis. The same is true when understanding the existential connections between father and son, teacher and pupil, and the conflict between rivals. Thus, history is not simply a series of historic events wars and cultural shifts, but of the metamorphosis and stages of the human identity. Each civilization in its turn brings into human history the drama of the progression and development of human identity, until humanity is able at last to produce a whole and moral human consciousness, which is the purpose of history. Monotheism and Morals Rav Ashkenazi claimed that only when acknowledging himself as created, can man develop a true and firm moral agenda. According to Kabbalic ideas, man was created and put into this world in order to acquire the life he had received as a gift from his creator, achieving this by treating others with the moral dignity and ethical respect that such gift demanded. As Rab Ashkenazi applied a meta-historical and ethical terminology to Kabbalic principles, he managed all the while to connect the abstract framework of Kabbalah to the moral mundane activities of the Jewish believer. Monotheism becomes the basis for morals, and morals are a crucial element of monotheism. From Jewish to Hebrew identity, the theory of engendement ultimately focuses on Jewish identity. Manitou discusses a Hebrew identity, the heritage that constituted the continuity of the Jewish identity throughout history, since Abraham the Hebrew, through exile when it transformed into a diasporic, religion-focused Jewish identity which constituted the consciousness of the Jewish people for 2,000 years, and until once again it transformed into a national, Israeli identity. Upon Kibbutz Galuyot the return and gathering of the exiled communities in Israel, the Jewish people has the opportunity to bring together the different ways of life, or the diverse identities it gathered during its exile among the nations, and begin world peace within itself. In this part of the video, we'll be diving deep into publications and unraveling its profound impact. Hebrews at Ha Ivri The Secret of the Hebrew Identity Part I Part Two. Edition Gabriel Ben Shmuel, Israel Pico, Chova Betel, 
2005, 2009 Miss Plamishich. A eulogy for the Messiah. Dishin Israel Piko, Ite Ashkenazi Ad Elikim Simsovic, Shovabet L, 2006 Sodleshin Hekish The Secret of the Holy Tongue. Dishin Shomo Ben Naim and Israel Piko, Shovabet L, 2007 Sod Midrash Hatoid at Midrash of the Ingendaments. Dishin Haim Rotenberg, Shovabet L, 2009 Midrash Bzod Hehafachum Midrash in the Secret of Opposites Edition Ite Ashkenazi, Yediet Akronit and Bet Morash Press. 2009 Israel Mzain Alls and Israel From Where to Where Edition Che Shat Gay, Elikim Simsovic, Mendelbaum Private Pubble. 2013 French Le Parole et Script, Edition Marcel Goldman. Part 1 Penza La Tradition Juive Aujourd'hui. Part 2 Penza La Vie Juive Aujourd'hui. Edition Albin Michel, 1999. Kimit Sion, Part 1 Notes Sur La Paracha, Part 2 Modem. Jerusalem, Foundation Manito, 1997. Koginsky, Michel. Unbrewed Zerijing Juive. Homage au Rav I Havilan Ashimozi Manito. A Hebrew Man of Jewish Origins, Rav Leon Ashkenazi's Biography. Editions Ormea, 1998. I love interacting with my viewers, so leave me a comment and I'll do my best to respond.